everybody. Thank you for joining us one more time. Today is uh, Thursday, the 17th of March. It's St. Patrick's Day. It's a celebration for our Irish uh, people, Irish friends, uh, including Gordon Landefeld, who is wearing a very nice outfit today in the Cleveland office. And it's a very good experience to see someone walking around uh, wearing green stuff, uh, green outfit. And also is uh, always good to have the, the person, or the people that are <clears throat> getting in touch with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who is the most successful attorney in the last uh, 45 years, for over 45 years working with the immigration field and helping thousands of families every single year. So let's welcome Ms. Wong. Hello, Ms. Wong. How are you doing today? I am very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we're going to paint green today um, for St. Patrick's Day, which is a huge celebration for our Irish friends. And also, I've been watching some videos that are really, really uh, getting into my heart because uh, I saw some kids getting to their first day at school in Italy. Those kids are from Ukraine, and they were received with a, an applause and uh, a lot of people looking at them in a good way. So we still have good people. So how are you doing so far, Ms. Wong? How are you uh, getting with all of this uh, new stuff that we're getting right now? Things are good. It's just the work from is still very slow, but something weird is happening. So instead of going in first out, first out, uh, first in. So for example, we have cases that we have filed in March, April, May of last year, and we still haven't gotten the work permit. Now they're approving like work permits that we have filed like in January, February. So I'm like, oh, please uh, approve the old one first. Because they normally give you, they always give you a 180 day extension. And once that 180 day extension passes, it's not like a green card where you can go get an info pass and get a stamp. So it extends it another year. Once the 180 day pass, it's as if you don't have a work permit. So people who pass that 180 days on that receipt is really dying because they're losing their jobs. They couldn't get a driver's license and a lot of newspapers are writing this up so hopefully washington will be listening and they will extend our work permits thank you so much miss wong and some people are um getting some documents signed for uh let's say four hundred thousand people or two hundred thousand people in order to get uh a kind of relief for Venezuelan people, just like the Cubans used to have a long time ago, uh, do you think it's possible to get a benefit just gathering signatures from, from people? Uh, maybe not Venezuela, because Cuban happened because of the whole, you know, the Cold War, the, the nuclear reactor, uh, the years of fighting between the two countries. Um, and also they really worry, which is happening now, is the whole philosophy of Cuba goes to other countries, which of course now is happening, you know, to, to, to Chile, back to Venezuela, to, um, it was just not good. So. I don't, ask, I don't know if it will happen to Venezuela, it would be nice. But what I'm more worried about is American immigration have always been in the olden, more than 50 years ago, as Eastern Hemisphere and Western Hemisphere, resulting in a lot more white people uh, than Asians or than people of color. So the Civil Rights Act came in, the Color Quota Act came in in 65, 64. So now the color of our people are changing, changing. A lot more people at one time speak Chinese, uh, now uh, Latino, Spanish, everything you see a Spanish language in there. Uh, so people is cha are changing in America, but now with all these um New country specific uh, uh, Syrians get TPS, and then um, El Salvadorians get TPS, uh, Hong Kong people get DED, uh, Venezuelans. So 
it's more and more so at one time Lebanon got TPS, now no more. So it's more becoming country specific. And I don't know if it's good for the future of our country to go on country specific instead of world specific or instead of quota like uh, employment based, family based. So things are changing. So we need to wait and see. But personally, I think in the long run, we don't want it to be divided because a lot of, for example, Chinese went to Venezuela, but they want to keep a Chinese passport. So are they Venezuelan or are they Chinese? A lot of uh, like uh, Spanish people in the olden days went to uh, Mexico, uh, went to um, Argentina. So now because the parents or grandparents are from uh, Portugal or Spain, they got Portuguese passport or Spanish passport. Um, so now they they could use ESTA. So are they really Spanish or are they? So it's it's becoming difficult, I think, in the American immigration world. Yeah, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And well, we have several questions coming in. And thank you for joining us because this is a show where the attorney Margaret W. Wong can help you get an immigration relief or at least an answer to your case. Um, so we have a question here. It's a lady asking for a friend. And it says, uh, hi, I have a question. Hopefully you can help me, please. I have a friend. She's an illegal mom married to an American man. She's trying to divorce him and get full custody of her two children. He's an abusive man to the two kids and has a new girlfriend, and she is abusing the four-year-old kid. Uh, she needs a lawyer, please. Do you know anyone? I'll appreciate it so much. God bless you, Ms. Wong. Right. So I think you need uh, more a family lawyer or divorce lawyer because they are married. So you're talking about um, child support. You're talking about divorce law. So you need a family lawyer. Depends on where you live. Um, the good news is in Cuyahoga County, Cleveland, Ohio, or even Franklin, which is very conservative, uh, the laws in America are pretty pro-woman when it comes to divorces. So it depends on where you live. Um, get a local lawyer to do divorce work. Now, on the immigration work, if you had reported this to a police, it could be a U visa case. It could also be a Wawa case because it's a marriage to a U.S. citizen. He was abusive. Now he has another girlfriend. But also look at the history of this man. Uh, see if he got the, he's born in America, he got the green card through marriage. So if he had been married and divorced, look at that divorce and see if he has a history of violence and maybe get to know the ex, uh, ex-wife and stuff like that. So on the immigration side, you may have already gotten a green card and you're talking from two year to 10 year green card, or you have never gotten a green card, then you can do a Wawa case. Or of the children, who's not his children, but it's probably your other uh, husband's children, um, could he do? Could they do ward of court because they're being abused? So these are all issues on the immigration world. But when it comes to divorces, you need a good family lawyer or a divorce lawyer or a custody lawyer to handle that divorce. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And yeah, maybe... This person could be asking as well about an attorney that could help her immigration status. Uh, so what what happens if she's married to an American man, but she does not have any documents? Would she qualify for VAWA? Yes. Yes. Absolutely depends on me. I don't know if she reported to police or how was the abuse, was it mental, psychological, physical, sexual, So and how was she being abusive to a child? But abusive man or woman could file for Wawa and get a work permit between two and a half months and six months. That's the first thing. On the other hand, she may have already gotten the two-year green card, which means that she's married to the American man for less than two years. Now you can also do an extension. Once you complete the a divorce, you can also do an extension of that green card by filing 751. So it depends on what the situation is, uh, or depends if you left the country and come back with the children. So then we have to decide what the how the case is. But definitely, what well, was one of your options? Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And don't forget that Ms. Wong has offices in nine cities of the United States, Atlanta, Chicago, Columbus, Cleveland, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is 216-279-3984. 
216-279-3984. We have another very interesting question, and it's a tough one. Uh, It says, I have a green car, but do I have the right to medical insurance? I I was told I don't. And because of that, I could not follow my treatment, and I had a stroke. And since I live a hell every day, every minute, I think about suicide. It depends on where you live in New York. New York State, especially New York City, have very, very good insurance program, Medicaid, Medicare, and stuff like that. Also in Ohio, the, the whole Trump thing about 9, 1, uh, 944, the public charge form is gone. You also already got the green card. You are entitled to charity care. Oh, no, no, no. Just go to a hospital. Just don't even talk about money because hospitals have nice people. Talk to their social worker and get treatment. If you don't have a lot of American citizens and green card holders have no insurance, they go to the hospital and they will be taken care of. I mean, absolutely, you should be taken care of. And social workers will work with you on getting help. They have departments of social worker to help people like you. Don't give up hope. And suicide, and please don't, I mean, who am I to tell you? Don't think about it. If you think about it, there's nothing. There is a wonderful book that President Clinton talked a lot about called uh, Descent into depression or descent into darkness. There's a lot of books like that. I read it to help my clients. So you need to read those books. And I'm sure they're also translated in Spanish. Number one. Number two is also when you go see a hospital, tell them you have suicidal thoughts. Then they'll also help you. America is awesome when it comes to treatment of mental, especially after the virus. I mean, America is just a beautiful country. Yet you have a green card. They're not going to let you to die. All right? So please do go see a doctor. And don't worry about money because there's a lot of insurance to cover care because you already have a green card. Public charge is gone. Well, uh, Ms. Wong, sadly, the person is telling me that uh, he does not speak very good English. So That's fine. That's fine. Um, if, if you can find an interpreter... Uh, I, I I don't know where he could be from. Rafik Fofi is the name. Okay. So, no uh, problem. Go see a hospital. I don't know if you live in Cleveland. Cleveland Clinic have a big department of translators. Metro Health have a department of translators. Lives in Columbus, Ohio, Miss Wong. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It's beautiful. Uh, there's tons of help in Columbus. Columbus actually is more growing city than Cleveland, Ohio. Go to a hospital in um, in Columbus, and the the reception would treat you. Tell them you have, if not just when you get there, call our office. We have translated; they can help you. No problem. We can do it. Thank you so much, Ms. Right. Wong. And I know all, most of these hospitals, especially in Cleveland, because they are my friends, and we contribute to their success. Um, we they have and and just call my office. No problem. When you get there, just call and you talk to them. Don't worry. Yes, and I'm trying to find the place where this person is from, but I have no idea. Uh, but thank you so much for the question. Okay. Please, uh, what I'm going to do, Ms. Wong, is I'm going to send them the address of the Columbus office, and maybe uh, they can call to the office or maybe w- go one day and receive some orientation about how to get the, the green card because it looks like this person qualifies already for uh, citizenship. So maybe uh, there is something Good they can point. do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's from Algeria. Algeria. Is yeah. You'll be fine. I know it's going through hell there. And no, no, no. Don't worry about uh, charity care because you should go see a doctor now. And just when you get there, go call us. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216 Eight four. Hello, my brother uh, deported last week to Egypt because he has aggravated felony and his case is still pending in the circuit court. All yes. of my family, yeah. I'm sorry. So the ad, the question is, my mother is a citizen. My whole family is here. My brother may have committed aggravated felony. His case has been denied in the immigration court, in the Board of Immigration Appeals now is in the circuit. 
even though your case is already in the circuit, because you lost in the Board of Immigration Appeals, you already have a final deportation, which is weird because Biden already said no deportation unless criminal record. So I presume your brother have a very serious criminal record because otherwise he should not and would not be deported, especially for Egypt, number one. Number two is for now, number one, talk to your lawyer who's handling the circuit court case because we have really good lawyers in America, number one. Number two is absolutely file and don't waste legal fee, the I-130 from mom. I don't know if he's married or single, a mom have a green card uh, or citizen, a mom citizen. So file it. So the whole thing is, the question is how could he come back? There are only two ways to come back, either get a tourist visa or a student visa, which already I can tell you now, don't even have dreams about that, it's unreachable dream unreachable dream but then the second way is come back with a green card how do you come back with a green card you either wait for 10 years you already have deportation if you wait for 10 years potentially you don't need to do the 212 or the 601a because on the other hand i presume this is aggravated fun and the question can you even ever come back because the fact that they deported you is pretty tough because right now i'm not seeing a lot of deportation so um Number one, mom definitely filed the green card for you. For him, also have sisters and brothers, everybody filed because if mom passed away, then at least we have sisters and brothers because until something is filed, you preserve the priority. Number two, ask the lawyer to see after 10 years, after 20 years, after five years, can he come back? You need to look at the NTA, the note that I'm sure your lawyer did all that you, because this case was tried at least two times, at least three times, CIS denied bond, that's why he's probably in jail. And then uh, IJ denied, BIA denied. So ask your lawyer, did he ever come back? Look at a, a notice to appear. If it's an aggravated felony and the judge approved, oops. But look at also the certified judgment entry. Right now, there's a lot of new laws on what criminal record is. is uh, it's you can come back after 10 years or 20 years or even now because they're changing on all these criminal especially on that um on the code of the criminal also depends on if the criminal record is from new york from atlanta from ohio so check out all that but for now you don't even need a lawyer file the i-130 from all the sisters and brothers is about five hundred some dollars so save the legal be spend it on the filing fee and file it you preserve a priority date then look at the nta don't apply for just rehab now. So make sure no more criminal record. I don't even know if it's a drug case or a minor with sex and that's bad or selling drugs to your church, that's bad. Um, look at the case. I couldn't say you could come back. I know you cannot come back now or next five years, maybe after 10 or 20 years, provided it's not aggravated. And I'm surprised because Egypt is such a horrible place. You probably already applied for asylum. If it's not, if it's aggravated, can I even do asylum? You would have done withholding. These are serious litigation cases that I, you know, that I'm sure your lawyer is already fighting for you. But if you win in circuit court, he should be able to come back. Then you have to file another case in U.S. District Court to make him come back. So don't don't stop the case. You may win in circuit. Depends on what circuit. Second and ninth is better. Six six we are changing. So we'll see. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for your answer. And don't forget that you can get in touch with the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, with over 45 years of experience. If you call the phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Ms. Wong, the next question is very short, but it's very interesting. Do India yes. have investment visa? Yes. Uh, you're probably talking about EB-5. EB-5 just changed. And a lot of Indians are interested. EB-5 is going back to 800,000, no more than half a million direct investing. But your question is, does India have an e-visa? The answer is no. So most Indian people, it's easier to immigrate to Canada. They immigrate to Canada as a landed after three years, became a Canadian citizen. Now they do the e-visa. But India have EB-5. There are two types of investment visas. Uh, EB-5 just changed last few days. It's very exciting news, actually. But India does not have And thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And by the way, I just wanted to mention that um, it's published in our social media that the field offices and uh, some other customer service offices of USCIS are opening now to the public attention. So 
Uh, would this mean that we're going to have a faster attention to the cases, Ms. Wong? That's interesting because I checked because the the, the law, the, there is a public uh, press release saying that uh, USCIS is preparing to be fully operational by June 5th of 2022. If we look compared this release with the 2020 release, um, it's the same release. So I wonder if there's a mistake from immigration or from the press services. But what that really means is that they expect to be taking off fingerprints. They, I don't know necessarily if it will be work permit would be faster because of this release, because those are inside people. What this this press release basically means is you're right. It's about the finger, like public facing public is like a, a asylum interview right now. They let us. They stop letting us use Webnix. Now it goes back to Webnix. So does this mean they allow us to go back in, uh, in, in office? Um, right now we don't know the answer, but the press release is out. So I'm glad you asked the question. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to happen in the short future, but uh, not sure yet when it's going to happen. So uh, thank you so much for clarifying and we hope that some things are going to work faster because there's a lot of people waiting for interviews for over one year or two years and um, some people are getting desperate. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Uh, the next question is, hi, Mrs. Wong. I am waiting for my green card, but my passport is expired and I cannot get a new one because my country won't provide it. Is it true that I can ask for a booklet to travel or something as a refugee? Yes, you can get a refugee travel document. The form to do it is I-131 in the USCIS.gov. But be careful because you're still waiting for your green card. Don't go back home. Uh, you cannot go back home and depend, like we have a lot of, for example, Venezuelans that carry Chinese passports. So I would also not go back to China or Venezuela because you don't know, I mean, I mean, you know, but Technically, we don't know what immigration is thinking because then you have two countries, you have to file asylum. So just be careful. For example, from India, you can go through the Himalayas, walk in, but now the borders are very tight and they know because immigration now is run by Homeland Security. So don't go in thinking America don't know because they know. Um, but definitely apply for, that's what we call a refugee travel document. And if you want to buy the ticket and tell them you need it for travel and your country won't issue the passport, they can do it faster for you so you could start traveling. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And we have a question in Spanish and it says, um, <clears throat> for the Venezuelan TPS, uh, people are already talking about the renewal of the um, TPS. If my TPS has not been approved yet or granted yet, uh, can I apply for the renewal? Do I need to do that or it's going to work automatically? Okay, so I presume uh, you have a TPS filing, but it's not a, a lot of people have not approved. So under the law, you don't need to do the renewal. The renewal is actually more important for the registrants. Because, for example, the, the Hurricane Mitch for Honduras people, a lot of times at that time, they didn't have the money. They didn't do it. That was in the 90s. And then after... Um, the program finished, you can do a late registration, like every few years to give you late, and then they do it, and now they have to justify it. So, so, so registration is actually more important than the renewal. So if yours is not granted, you don't need to renew, you don't need to register because you already registered. But if for people who did not do TPS because they thought they have asylum work permit, why do they want to waste more money and do TPS? If I were you, I would still file it to register, but don't you don't need to file the work permit because that itself is four hundred ten dollars. You can just file the eight two one. On the other hand, for Hong Kong, you don't need the eight two one. Just file straight a work permit. So each country is a little bit different. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And uh, I have another question. It's very very interesting. I don't, I don't know if someone has asked this question before. But it's the first time I see it. Um, I have criminal charges in my country. Would this affect me if I migrate to the United States 
Would they investigate my background in my country? My crime was not too bad, but I got a conviction. Right. There's a lot of young Palestinians years ago, even now, the question, and I never understood that until now I do a lot more uh, Middle Eastern cases. They'll ask, did you ever throw a stone? Because because they have no guns and no you know, weapons, so they throw stones at people or the Israelis. So that there, the answer is no, because you never throw stones, right? In your case, it seemed like you are still in your foreign country. You have not gotten the visa. So when you file for the visa, you do the DS-160. On the form, they ask you, you know, what's the name? Were you ever in America? No. Do you intend to study here? No. I just want to go visit. I want to study. Do you intend to work? No, because I'm just studying or work. Then the, on there, they have a question. Were you ever cited, arrested, pled guilty to, did bad acts, um, arrested? So in America, arrest means fingerprint. Like, for example, I stole something from Walmart. It's only $13. They don't arrest you there. They call the police. Police come. Or the, so, or the security people, they take you to the, to the police station and to the fingerprint. So you would think you were not arrested. But then if we say no, they'll say we have lied. So uh, arrested means they actually took you to the... So in your country, depends on what your claim of criminal charges. But the DS-160 form when you apply is all covered. So you have to say yes. They'll want to see uh, the criminal record. But sometimes, even if it's a criminal record, if it's light, they may still approve it. So don't think they're not going to approve. So it depends on what kind of criminal record. Um, and even if no criminal record, for example, um, it's a drug case, right? I smoked one marijuana. I was stopped. The police never charged me, never did anything. So you still, whoops, that's not good, big bombs. That's an asylum case, but that's terrorism. Yeah. So they won't approve it. Yeah, it looks like uh, they yeah. were in a Throwing protest, stuff. and yeah. yeah, it's like they make the 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 bombs with yeah. gasoline inside. I wonder they what country fire. are you from? Yeah, if you can tell me what country are you from, no, they're not going to approve this case, and especially with the criminal charge. So you need to actually have someone who speaks English to translate the criminal charges, and see in. Your country, is it that bad? In America, bombs is really, really bad. It's totally terrorism. They will never. So another way to do is, for example, you have an American mother, American father. Maybe on the immigrant visa, you can file for a Cardona waiver, but uh, Manotov homemade bombs is not good. No, they're not going to approve this case. Don't, yeah. I mean, but I, I'm sorry about that. I got caught at no defense. You never tell yeah. them you have no defense. You always come up there when I'm from, but they they, they will come for me. Yeah, yeah. Don't, you don't, don't even come here because FBI here is really tough, really tough. You don't want all those water. I mean, I don't mean to be mean, but I watch too many movies, but don't come. Well, and this person don't want to say the the country where he is from, where he or she is from, because I'm of so safety. Sorry. Um, and we understand, but... Uh, Things happen, Ms. Wong, and we just hope that people can uh, can apply for a case where where they can have a release. What are the consequences of filing for asylum if I am lying to the government in the United Ooh. States? No, there is a new law that just came out that I myself found very interesting. Uh, what's the difference between material misrepresentation? Or frivolous. If the judge decided you have lied, or completely fabricated, or 75% fabricated, and worse, as if immigration investigated. Right now, there's a big department on asylum fraud, especially from notarios and stuff. So if it's frivolous, you never, never, never get, I know I sound so stupid, but never, never, ever get. Um, green card, work permits, um, H-1B visas, tourist visa, never, uh, if it's frivolous. If it's material misrepresentation only, if you're, if, you're, if you're under 21, your parents are green card holders, if your wife or spouse or husband is a citizen, then you can file a pardon. Your children cannot give you a fraud waiver, but your uh, uh, 
but the parents and spouse can give you a waiver. And depends on the court, like it's easier to get uh, these kind of waiver in, in bigger cities like Chicago. I should say easier, depends on how we applied. But um, maybe even depends which judge you got also depends on if did you lie when you were young? Did you say you're, you're gay and then you married a, a, a opposite sex of two children or did you never say you have children but you have like three marriages? So it depends on the, and I've seen it, I've been doing this for 45 years. So um, now there's a lot of precautions on that. Um, and if you actually tell your lawyer you have lied, uh, the lawyer have an obligation to inform the court. It's just pretty serious. The whole thing is make sure it's not frivolous, it's material misrepresentation and file a waiver. But those are that's why we have to be very, very careful. If you if you say you're a gypsy but you're not from Romania, that's a problem because the whole line is that gypsy you cannot use like you say you're gay and not gay. That's not fair to the real gypsy people or the gay people because once immigration knows a lot of people lie like Romanians like they're gypsy, then they don't trust the real gypsies. That's not nice, you know. Okay, yeah, that's true. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for sharing your thoughts and your experience in each uh, answer. And well, we have to dismiss now because our time is up. But thank you so much for all the information. You are going to Columbus tomorrow, right? Yes. So um, I will make sure that I, I give all the information to this person that uh, wants to talk to you. There's another person asking... Do you have a physical office in Columbus? Of course, Ms. Wong has the office in Columbus. And you can just call the phone number, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. See you next week, Ms. Wong, and take care and have a good weekend. Thank you so much. And for everybody who has joined us today, please don't forget to call the phone number, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Two seven nine three nine eight four. Margaret W. Wong and Associates with over 45 years of experience in the immigration field. Thank you so much and see you next time.